Here you can see there are a serial cascade of nodes, hence the name serial node, where each correction takes place one after the other, after the other, after the other. There are other node structures that are available. And in fact, if I go ahead and delete these last nodes by pressing the delete key, I'll go ahead and show you some of these extra node structures. The first one I'm going to start with is the parallel node structure. So I'm going to create a second serial node. And I know that I have some HSL qualifications I want to make, specifically his shirt, his shirt, and her shirt. So if I press Shift P or go up to the nodes menu and choose Add Parallel, you can see that all of a sudden I'm getting a stack of nodes. And this is a really handy way to work because each of these nodes takes as its input the state of the node connected previously. In other words, whatever I do to this node, that's the state of the image that's going to be fed to nodes 2 and 4 and 5 simultaneously. That can be really handy because it can prevent changes you make in one of the parallel nodes from affecting the keys that you can get in the other parallel nodes because all of these nodes are keying based on the output of node 1. So now I've got three stacked corrections all of these nodes feeding back into this parallel mixer node, which all by itself does nothing. It simply combines the outputs of all of these parallel nodes. And the sum total can then be worked on by another serial node. So say at this point, I want to go ahead and reduce the saturation of the entire ball of wax. I can do that here. Now, while we're on the subject of making individual corrections with individual nodes, there's no hard and fast rule about how you use these nodes and what you do with them. For example, in node 6 here, we're simply doing a saturation adjustment. And let's say I want to leave that alone because the client hasn't made up their mind whether or not they like it might want to turn that on and off at a later time. In the meantime, I'm going to add another serial node. And in that node, I'm going to go to my curves, open up the custom curves, turn off custom curve ganging. And I'm going to go ahead and add an S curve to create a higher contrast look in adjustment in addition to that desaturation I created. So, I've got a saturation adjustment. I've got a Luma S curve. Each one is added individually so that it's easy for me to turn each one off and on. That's one strategy of working. Some colorists elect to do every single adjustment they make as an individual node. And that gives, certainly gives you a high degree of control when you want to turn individual things on and off to preview how they look. Uh, however, you can end up with a huge wad of nodes and it can be a little ungainly later on, perhaps. It's all a matter of style. There's no right or wrong way to work. In this node tree, you can see we've got a stack of parallel nodes. We have a continued stack of serial nodes, all of which are fed from the source input and lead to the source output. Here's another fun bit of node management that you'll definitely want to be aware of. Let's say I move to other shots in the sequence. Then I pop back here and I go, you know what? I have another idea. I'm going to go back to my primary node and I'm going to cool this off dramatically. And then here I'm going to go to node six I'm going to decrease the saturation even more. I remember I was doing that S curve in seven. I'm going to just blow out those highlights and mercilessly compress the shadows. 
Now I've got this very extreme look and suddenly I realize, what am I doing? This looks terrible. This is insane. I must have lost my mind. So I could do a bunch of undos in order to get back to the original state, or at least the state that I hope was original when I got to this shot. Or I could go up to session and I can choose original memory. When I choose original memory, the state of each node in the tree goes back to the initial state of when I originally jumped onto this thumbnail. So, original memory is sort of like an uber undo that takes you all the way back to the way the grade was when you first jumped on that shot. Now, be aware, whenever you leave the shot and go back, the base state that original memory will take you back to gets reset. So if you think you're going to use original memory, don't go jumping to another shot and returning or you'll be unable to do so. At this point, you'll just be stuck having to use your multiple undos to get back to where you were.